Hi, my name is Tim Hawthorne. I am a Druid and Elder Bard of Gorsev Inniswetrin. Happy Equinox. We appear to have survived another winter and the end of this terribly long lockdown is in sight. Nature is once again, regardless of all that, preparing all around us to burst into leaf, flower and fruit. Um, in its usual way. This general feeling of the sap rising makes it a good time to be putting this year's plans into action as best we can. An equinox occurs twice a year around the 20th of March and the 22nd of September when the Sun is directly over the Earth's equator. The Sun's path, which is known as the ecliptic, is angled at about 23.4 degrees to the equator crossing it at two imaginary points in space known as the equinoxes. The crossing from south to north is known as the vernal or spring equinox, which is where we are now, and the crossing from north to south later in the year is the autumnal equinox. The name equinox is derived from the Latin equus, which means equal, and nox meaning night, because around the equinox, Day and night are approximately equal in length. That might have happened about a week ago. At equinox, the Sun will cross the equator at the beginning of the celestial constellation of Pisces. This corresponds to the start of the astrological sign of Aries. A week after equinox this year, the Easter moon comes to fullness in the constellation of Virgo, which is in the astrological sign of Libra. Um, if you're not confused already, you will be. Being such a large sign, Virgo dominates the springtime night skies. A full moon might appear at her head, in her hand, which is the star speaker, that's the bright one in the middle, or at her feet below Arcturus in Bootes, one of the most valued navigational stars, which rises just after sunset in March. Virginid meteors may be seen from early March to early April. I'm not quite sure what that was that scudded past us earlier this week, but it was quite loud. Looking south at midnight, we now face the direction of galactic spin. The north pole of the Milky Way is in the Coma Berenices above. This is the seed moon, or the egg moon. Easter is traditionally the time to plant out potatoes. The lengthening of daylight compared to night time puts out a massive signal to all plant life that it's time to start growing again, even though we still have a couple of months of potential frost ahead of us yet. Nature surges ahead with a tremendous spurt of verdant growth right now, which will carry on through to solstice. So, putting paganism into practice now, this is the busiest time for sowing and planting towards the main harvest of the year. At the new moon, a week before equinox, I started sowing for this year's crop. First, I prepared the seed trays with potting compost. This provides a medium to support the roots of the seedlings and to feed them with water and air. I gently compact the compost to give the plants a firm base to establish themselves in and then I give them a good soaking with the watering can. Ultimately, you want to keep the soil damp, not too wet and not too dry. They don't need much from the soil itself as they get most of the nutrition they need from the seed at this stage. I'm going to use my special magic stick, which has been marked out at the end at 1 and 2 centimetres to give me an indication to the depth of the hole I should make for the seeds. I'm going to put a 1 centimetre dip in each of these cells. As you can see, it's not very deep at all. The other important thing to do is to label them because seedlings can look remarkably similar when they're just small. So, armed with my trusty Gwydion McPagan Moon Diary, I've got my list of things that I want to plant. I'm going to sow some tomatoes and spinach in the first tray, but first I'm going to recycle some old labels. Most of these are single seeds. I shall gently cover them over with compost. The spinach seeds are much larger and I can multi-sow several seeds into each hole. And then just dust a little extra compost on top 
that's our first tray done. Next I'm going to make some labels for sunflowers, chamomile and hyssop. Uh, these will be giant sunflowers, I sowed some variegated smaller ones just before the new moon. And here's some hyssop I grew earlier. I'm sowing two sorts of chamomile here, which have really, really tiny little seeds. Uh, German chamomile, which is good for making herb teas, and Roman chamomile, which is better for making chamomile lawns. Um, it's a bit more pungent than German chamomile, and isn't necessarily quite so nice in teas. For the last row, I will put in some giant sunflowers. Uh, these are big seeds. So I'm just going to put one in to each cell and make sure they're covered up with soil so they get the soaking they deserve. A light dusting of compost, rather like baking a cake. And lastly, I'm going to put in a tray of broad beans and that will do me and not forgetting the label, all important. So I sowed my first batch of seeds on March the 11th when the moon was in the sign of Pisces. This was just before the dark moon and the calabrese and some of the salad are already beginning to show above the soil. Today's second batch was sown on the 16th after the new moon when the moon was in Taurus. Some of these earlier batch are still waiting but there's a few sunflowers and possibly some poached egg plants already on their way. So that's this month's exercise in practical paganism and now we just have to wait and see what all this lot turns into. So take care and take it often. Uh, it just remains for me to thank my lovely new patrons Jules and Anne, uh, Wes White and Tina Bragalia. Thank you ever so much for your support. If you'd, any of the rest of you would like to help support me making more videos, please consider joining my Patreon team. There's a link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe using the buttons below. And you can even click on the bell icon if you'd like to be notified as soon as I upload uh, the next video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.